cannot properly fly. So if it's a half bird, it's a transitional form. That's good evidence. It's not sufficient evidence, but it's some evidence. It's something better than nothing. It's something to provide evidence for the theory. So they come along with that, even though they don't have you know the the, the entire specimen. So they make the claim that you know what the bird bird could not properly fly, but. The seventh specimen of Archaeopteryx, after it's been uncovered, preserves a partial rectangular sternum, which is the breastbone. It's observed in all birds and uh, all flying uh, and non-flying birds. So it's long been suspected, but it's never been previously documented. So they never found it in the other fossils. So now they found it, and they say this attests to its strong flight muscles. So this was just a bird. And it wasn't this half bird, half reptile, it was just a bird. But still, the Archaeopteryx is displayed in universities around the world, even until today. You'll, you'll find it in, in, in museums, and you'll find it in uh, you know, several other places. Still being presented as evidence, even though it's been dismissed already. It's not being sufficient evidence. But let's continue. So that's removed from the, from the basket. Transitional form, coelacanth, 1930s. They find a coelacanth fossil, here's a picture of it. They say it's fin to limb evolution. So they said that this fish actually had limbs. So it had, like, it's like the fish, like some people, you know, you see, like Christians, they say Jesus and has the fish on their car and they have that little logo there. And some people, they have that fish logo and it says Darwin and it's got two legs on the fish. I mean, this is basically what's happened. They say that this fish had legs or had primitive legs and it was a transitional form. So they assumed that it would use its fins to walk around on the bottom of the seafloor. Okay, and it was dubbed Old Four Legs. And that's, that was his nickname because of its husky limb-like fins. So it's got really big limb-like fins. So they say, you know, this is probably one of those transitional forms. So it's really important. Coelacanth is an extremely important fossil because it's so old. It's an extremely old fossil from the dinosaur age. Okay, so what happens? They say, you know what, this is, this is evidence. We'll present this as evidence. So they present it as evidence. And then 1938, to everybody's surprise, the first living fish was caught. It was thought to be extinct for 70 million years. Nobody ever thought that they'd ever find a coelacanth. They caught this fish, that's why they call it dino fish, because it lived back in the time of the dinosaurs. Okay? They caught this fish and they realized it doesn't have any legs. No, it doesn't have, it, it was just fins. Exactly what they said it was before, that these are husky fins. Not necessarily limb-like, but they're husky fins, and that's precisely what they are. Uh, so coelacanth was dismissed from uh, the evidence. Transitional form A. Okay, so there are many other animals as well that came along, but now we move on to the ape. In the scenario of human evolution. So just take a look at take a look at this picture, for example. Now be honest, be completely honest with yourself. I'm not gonna make you raise your hand or anything, but be completely honest. D doesn't this picture generally for everyone just kind of just have this sticking in their mind? It it sticks in their mind and generally if you ask most people, let's say, you know, people let's just say let's say not educated people, not very highly educated people. People who have never studied the theory in detail. When they see this picture, generally, if they see it enough times, it kind of sticks in their mind, and they say, you know what, they just believe it to be true. Because we live in a spectator culture, and if you see something enough times, and you're bombarded with those images time and time again, it's sufficient evidence. But a simple picture is not sufficient evidence. You can draw anything. We could have drawn something else, and we could have come up with the same thing. So, um, my point is to... Not just say, you know what, no evolution, or yes, evolution. Just try to understand what's really going on, and not just you know, say, because, well, there's a picture, so you know, that must be proof. No. Neither, neither side, or no, nobody should ever say that. They should understand the argument. That's why, you know, hopefully, you know, we're trying to be educated people. So then, human evolution. So what Darwin wrote on the subject in his book, Origin of the Species, all he wrote was, light will be thrown on the origin of man and his history. So that's all he wrote in his book, first book, Origin of the Species. Then Thomas Huxley, another scientist, came along and he described many of the similarities and differences between humans and apes in his 1863 book, Evidence as to Man's Place in Nature. And then later on, Darwin came along and published his own book, The Descent of Man, which is a pretty big book. So he's explaining that humans, how did humans evolve? Humans evolved from these ape-like creatures or something along those lines. Now what happened after that claim? Many of Darwin's original supporters, such as Alfred Russell Wallace, in fact, Alfred Russell Wallace is the one who actually formulated the first theory of evolution. And Darwin actually took it from him. I mean, not, I mean, he didn't like steal it from him, but he told him, he said, in reality, you know, this guy is the actual one who came up with the theory before me. I just developed it, I made it famous, I published my book. So Alfred Russell Wallace, he's a little bit upset. Charles Lyell, his other followers, they're a little bit upset. They balked at the idea, he said that human beings could, that, that human beings, there's no way they could have evolved with all their impressive mental capacities and their moral sensibilities through natural selection. 
it couldn't have happened and we, we will not accept that. Because they say, you know what, you got the bones here, right? You got a ton of skull fragments, you got different species of humans, you got several, several hundreds, even thousands different species of apes. This bone structure is not going to do it for us. It doesn't mean anything for us. You know, whether you find the fossils or not, they're saying we don't care. Because we don't believe, we can't believe that the human being somehow evolved from an animal and it's got all this extra mental capacity. It's got all these other capacities, we can't do this. And in fact, this bulking that they were saying, you know, applies to animals as well. For example, you know, it may not have been known in detail at that time, but for example, the transition from warm blood to cold blood, from transition from laying eggs to becoming a, a mammal, for example, there's many, many other things that need to take place. So for example, for a fish to turn into a reptile, and for a reptile to turn into a bird, it's not just about you know, having a similar skeletal structure. So even if you do, what they're saying here, is even if you do find the transitional forms, or you find some transitional forms, so what? You still haven't proven anything. You know, maybe it's a little bit, you know, you've supported your theory a little bit more, but you still haven't proven anything. But anyways, we'll continue with, you know, the transitional forms. Anyways, so transitional form, one of the, one of the popular ones, Neanderthal. Now, I'm sure, let me see, raise your hands. How many of you have heard the term Neanderthal before? Okay, it's used in common language, right? If you want to make fun of somebody, say, oh, you Neanderthal, you know, so, so stupid or something like that. Like, you're so primitive. Right, so it's become a common term, so people know what's kind of going on. So in 1856, they discovered, they came up with the Neanderthal man, okay, which is Homo Neanderthalensis. Okay? They were human beings who suddenly appeared 100,000 years ago in Europe and who disappeared or were assimilated by mixing with other races quietly but quickly 35,000 years ago. So the only difference from modern man is that their skeletons are more robust and their cranial capacity is slightly bigger. So that's the, the main difference that they found at that time, okay, for the Neanderthals. And they said that this is a transitional form. So they made what these pictures are called, you'll see a lot of these, although you've probably seen them in your bio books, you've seen them on National Geographic, you've seen them on BBC, you've seen them everywhere. These are what they call reconstructions, okay? First of all, reconstructions have absolutely no scientific value whatsoever, okay? As you can see, big difference between two reconstructions for the same thing. But they absolutely have no scientific value. All they're, they're there is to you know, explain to the public. And I'm not saying it's wrong to have a reconstruction. It does help in, in, uh, in uh, teaching, in pedagogy. But uh, it's just something to watch out for. Just because you can see the picture of the Neanderthal doesn't necessarily mean that that's what they found. Okay? That's not, doesn't mean that that's what they found. That's what, they found something else, but they made this uh, you know, drawing out of it. Okay, so continue with Neanderthal. Then we say detailed comparisons of Neanderthal skeletal remains with those of modern humans have shown that there is nothing in Neanderthal anatomy that conclusively indicates lo locomotor, manipulative, intellectual, or linguistic abilities inferior to those of modern humans. So there's more, there's more um, reconstructions, but basically m many scientists, or I say most scientists, have concluded <coughs> that there's really nothing that significant to be to make a claim that this, uh, you know, these Neanderthals that we found are somewhat, somehow, you know, uh, considered to be a transitional form. So moving on, transitional form, Piltdown Man, 1912. They come up with a fossil Piltdown Man. They found a more ape-like jawbone. Okay, so they found a jawbone and a cranial fragment. Okay, where the teeth and the skull were more human-like. Okay, the teeth and the skull were more human-like. So they said, um, you know. This could be a transitional form, and it's alleged to be 500,000 years old. Remember, this is 500,000 years old. Okay, it displayed as absolute proof for human evolution for 40 years in several museums. For 40 years, it's been displayed as absolute proof, and no fewer than 500 PhDs, 500 <coughs> doctoral theses were written.